Stop and frisk is the subject of intense public debate in New York City. There's a lot we know about the big numbers, close to 700,000 stops in 2011. But there are important things we haven't known that a new VERA study illuminates. Jennifer Fratello and Andres Renhipo fill us in. We did this study because there's very little known about the impact of stop, question, and frisk on the people who experience it, many of whom are young, black or Latino males, and what this might have to do with public safety. This study looks at stop and frisk from the perspective of those who are most likely to be stopped. To do that, we went to five of the most highly patrolled neighborhoods in New York City, and we surveyed nearly 500 young people, all of whom have been stopped by the police at least once in their lives. Our main findings were that getting stopped is, for many young people, a very familiar experience. They also don't trust law enforcement, and it's negatively linked to public safety in a variety of ways. So specifically, we found that 44% of the young people we surveyed had been stopped repeatedly, uh, nine times or more. The average number of stops in the past year was seven. And 71% of the young people surveyed had been frisked at least once, and 64% had been searched. Threats and use of force were also fairly common. This translates into serious public safety issues. For example, 88% of young people believe that residents in their neighborhood do not trust the police. Only 4 in 10 respondents said that they would be comfortable seeking help from the police if they were in trouble. Most said they would not report a crime even if they were the victim. And willingness to report crime de declines in young people who have been stopped more often in the past, even when they themselves are the victims. These findings are important because other research shows that intensive policing may reduce crime in the short term, but it may also sow the seeds for negative outcomes in the long term. Young people are self-confident and optimistic. 80% feel good about the racial and ethnic group they belong to and feel they have just as much of a chance to succeed in life as people from other neighborhoods. From the survey, we learned that many of our young participants are going to school or are actively participating in community organizations. They feel they want to serve at the community level, that they want to engage in productive lives, and they see the uh, aspirations and, and vision of their life that's, that takes them far beyond their neighborhood context. Research shows that when a young person perceives a police encounter to be procedurally fair and professionally conducted, he or she is more likely to have more positive perceptions of the police, regardless of the outcome and with greater or more positive perceptions of the police, uh, there is also the chance that those will translate into uh, greater and more fluid cooperation in the future, including re crime reporting and other types of cooperation with law enforcement. There are several concrete recommendations that flow from this work. First, the NYPD has reduced the number of stops in the past year and the crime rate is held steady. As they recalibrate the number of stops, we recommend that they take into account the serious adverse consequences that this study found. The NYPD can also build trust by expanding upon existing trainings that focus on fair and respectful interactions between residents and the police. Finally, this study provides a benchmark by which to measure the success of future efforts to build trust and improve relationships within the community. We hope that it's the starting point for ongoing research, hopefully in collaboration with the city and the New York City Police Department.